Hello, Timmy Nafso here with the Embedded Podcast at Fortis. We are filming from Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay at the Electronic Transaction Association. Enjoy the series as we interview thought leaders about all things payments, the past, the present, and the future. Starting with Colleen Taylor from American Express. Enjoy. Welcome to the Embedded Podcast. Timmy Nafso here, and I have Colleen Taylor with me. Colleen, welcome. Welcome. I love it. Thank you, <laughs> thank Timmy. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining. A little bit about Colleen. Colleen is a payments industry veteran with one year, no, 30 years of experience. <laughs> There's a lot of I'm right behind you. I'm right behind you. Uh, currently the president of Merchant Services US at American Express. Prior to joining American Express, Colleen served as EVP Merchant Services at Wells Fargo, as well as new payments at MasterCard. She has also held leadership positions at Capital One, Wachovia Bank, and JP Morgan Chase. Bonafide payments geek. That yes. is what we're saying here. And proven PL manager with a passion for driving transformational change. Wow, what a journey. That yeah. is really amazing to see. You and I were talking a little bit ago about my past of you know being up, you know, in the payments industry. I wouldn't call myself a payments expert at all, especially being that I was, you know, foot on the street, especially the days coming out of um, you know you could throw basically a dart and convert somebody's merchant services right, over right. Um, back in the early 2000s. And my family came from an entrepreneurial background and a lot of our focus was on direct billing right. and we use old knuckle busters and things like that. So to watch kind of an emerging market happen and for us to still be in the space, I think is quite amazing. So, uh, you know, that's cool. the great thing about payments. You know, I, I started in the game, as you said, you know, over 30 years ago. And um, I'll tell you a funny story. I joined Chase in the management training program. And out of my um, cohort, I was voted most likely to not be a banker in two years. <laughs> um, and the reason I've stayed is it's, it's been a, a really exciting journey. Like so much innovation, so much newness happening over those years that I felt like I was getting a new job sort of like every 12, 18 months. I was trying something new. Um, and so, you know, I think I'll stick around in payments for as long as it stays pretty interesting. And I think there's a long, there's a long runway. It is amazing to see how it's evolved. I mean, here we are at ETA and I would say in probably 2010, 2012, 2014, there was a reality of like, what is going to happen with the payments industry? Is it just going to be taken over by the Googles of the world and the Amazons of the world and so on and so forth. But we have seen this entire thing shift. Has there been scenarios for you as you were going through that, that the grass did feel greener on the other side, but you were like, this is it. Well, payments. you know, I mean, listen, uh, I, I spent a bunch of time really in the adjacent space to like core merchant services and acquiring. I was in something called cash management, treasury management, old school banking. Um, and we all feared sort of like these new companies, Google, PayPal, et cetera. Are they front of me or, or what's going to happen? What I can say is um, there's room for a lot of players yeah. uh, in this business. There's a room for a lot of innovation. One thing that happens with big companies like American Express or some of my prior uh, employers is there's a scale advantage, right? And so even with a new company, be it an Apple or a PayPal, et cetera, there's a scale advantage to uh, the bigger banks or the big issuers, et cetera, who have an existing relationship with the consumer or with the company. And so um, as I've looked at sort of the last 10 years, I've seen sort of these amazing levels of collaboration between those innovators like an Apple, like a Google, like a PayPal or Stripe, et cetera, some of the players that we hear and see here at ETA, the collaboration between sort of the incumbent players, big banks, big issuers, and those newer innovation uh, innovators that are bringing innovation to the fore. So again, I think there's a lot of room to uh, collaborate. I think there's a lot of room for innovation. And I don't think it has to be a 
zero sum game. I think the pie is actually growing and that we can see that in the numbers like re payment revenues has only consistently gone up. Absolutely, absolutely. And as we're heading, heading towards this cashless environment, I think American Express did a really good job. I remember when uh, the Op Blue program came out right. and I would love to ask here from your perspective today this this, you know, title of the merchant services in the US and small businesses and large businesses what is it exactly that American Express does and what is the goal there sure, for American Express? Sure. I mean, merchants? when you look at the overall economy, we can't, there's no denying that small businesses play such an important role in the everyday lives of most consumers, um, but certainly as a, a big growth engine, a big driver of our GDP. So at American Express, um, small businesses are important. At the start of the Opblue program, though, we realized that we weren't going to be able to get out with feet on the street, our own salespeople, um, to all of the small businesses across the, the country right. here in the U.S. And so what we did is partner with big acquirers and smaller ones um, and ask them to participate in a structure, the Opblue program, that would allow them to actually acquire on our behalf. Yes. The real success story for us is that we've actually grown American, Accept, uh, American Express acceptance over the years. And I can probably say that you go everywhere and the American Express card is accepted. And that's because of our Op Blue partners. And it's accepted at the small bodega in the Bronx or the nail salon in California or the butcher shop in Kansas. And that's yeah. because of our partnership uh, with these entities. So still a very important part of how we engage uh, here in the U.S. Um, I would say that uh, small businesses are so important to us. Um, I, I think I mentioned to you, Timmy, that we were behind sort of shop small. We were the yes. originators behind setting aside a special day post, uh, you know, sort of like uh, that Thanksgiving shopping days, yeah. like Black Friday. Yep. We started with shop small, getting um, our, our card members to go out and support small businesses. Now it's grown into a movement. Everybody it's wants amazing. to get in with, shop, um, with small businesses. And again, that's because they're important um, to the, our economy. They're important to us um, and we appreciate the business. Absolutely. You know, there's this evolution that we watched happen in small business as it relates to going back in time. It's actually an interesting psychology back in like the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the milk was brought to your home. The vacuum cleaner was fixed at your home. There are all these things that were happening and there was a tight relationship between the farmer's market and the community. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And in the 80s and 90s, we saw this shift towards these big malls, big box boxes and faceless experiences. And I think American Express has done an amazing job understanding the needs of not only the merchant, but also the consumer, and that they do long for a relationship with those that they're doing business with. And I think they've they've absolutely nailed that 100%. And for me personally, from a family of entrepreneurs and knowing what the Op Blue program did for us, you know, pri prior to the Op Blue program, you'd have, you know, two separate bank deposits as an yeah, example, that's or right. two separate statements or whatever the case is. It consolidated and took away clicks, if you will, that we could do less of them through the Out Blue program. And we've obviously seen the success of that That's through right. supporting That's small right. businesses. And again, you know, like when I think about um, our American Express card member, which as you know, our card member is uh, shops more frequently, has bigger baskets, et cetera. And so for small businesses, when you have an American Express card member come into your shop, it's, a, it's actually better for you economically. Yeah. But I know also that that card member has needs that run the spectrum of different types of merchants. So yes, they want to know and support small businesses, but they also shop at the biggest retailers who are also our very important partners. Um, we're in the game of trying to make commerce easy and to make our merchants successful and to make our card members successful. So we yeah. kind of sit in the middle and try to bring innovative solutions to all parties. Yeah, one of the few organizations that touches all from being a bank to being an issuer to being an acquirer right. so That's it's right. really impressive to see the connectivity let's go back in time a little bit okay uh, we talked about you know 2015 and we talked about you know the emergence of emv as an example which wasn't so new i mean 1992 in france 
2015 here. So a little we, bit late to are, the party, we, but we got we, there. We sometimes are slow to adopt <laughs> sometimes, here in the U.S. But, it's, but it's once complex. it happens, we the go. scale is so big, and which is why yeah. so many of those things that happen in other geographies, they still want to come here. Yeah. Take open banking, for example, right now. That's a big push in Europe, but every one of those open banking companies – are trying to get here. And that's because really it's like the scale of the US payment system is just so big. It is. And in 2015, 2016, there were a lot of folks that were anticipating the end of brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. Brick and mortar as we knew it. We get into 2020. I've actually heard you speak a little bit about Omni Channel and uh, what was happening during the era of COVID. And today we actually still have brick and mortar. It's alive and well and thriving to your point of omni-channel. Why do you believe that brick and mortar still survives today in this economic environment, even though COVID occurred? Yeah, so, and I've heard this say, I won't take credit for this. I've heard it say that really consumers really want a click and mortar um, environment. Yes. So uh, the shopping can occur on their device. These are very powerful machines that are sitting in our hands. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of consumers that want to go touch and feel what they're sure. purchasing. and. And so it's got to be this sort of combination environment to satisfy even the one consumer. There are some things I know to me that you buy in person only. Absolutely. Right? Um, there's other things where like you don't want to see anybody. It shows up at your door and you're completely fine with it. Um, I think the um, the retailer, the merchant that's going to exist in the future can satisfy the click and mortar needs and that's even down to the small businesses so many small businesses today i was at i was at a fedex store the other day and i saw a small business coming in with all of these huge order orders like lots of boxes and that was he had a shop but he also got an enormous amount of its volume coming in through his website yeah. so um small businesses have to be ready for the click side of it but they're just going to be some some consumers that that want um, to to touch and feel, and also want that personal relationship with the with the small business. Absolutely, yeah. We're we're seeing now like a lot of buzz. There's a lot of conversations here, even um, speaking uh, engagements that are happening about AI and the future of payments. So while at one point it was, you know, the online shopping experience is going to kill it, and it didn't. Now there's a sense of what's AI going to do for the industry. Do you have any perspective on kind of the new trends that are coming as it relates to AI and the future well, you know, of, of I think payments? AI, whether it's it's any sort of technology improvement, right? Absolutely. So AI, whether it's AI or it's machine learning, it's just going to make um, the system different, probably more efficient, um, probably bring scale in a different way. like. AI allows you just to crunch so much data yeah. so very quickly. What I think about AI is it's actually going to, it's really going to power a lot of the personalization that will happen with consumers. And so instead of being viewed as sort of this now middle-aged kind of uh, female shopper, someone can actually target me specifically, right. target Colleen based on my buying patterns. And so that personalization level that will be available to merchants to sell me exactly what I want, that is really gonna drive um, great economic benefit to awesome. the companies that are ready to take advantage of it. Yeah. So, you know, AI is scary. I mean, it is. We, it's we very scary. It and it's like, we'll <laughs> take our jobs, et cetera. When you see innovation, we've always feared that we're not going to make it. It's going to, but it it's it may not take the jobs, but it will definitely change the jobs that are going to be here. Absolutely. And the the folks that win, either companies or individuals that are just willing to embrace the change, understand it, learn it, and then see how how does it apply to what I'm doing? How does it apply to me owning a small payments company Absolutely. or? Me, American Express, being president of a, a payments division. We just have to embrace the change. The folks that don't embrace the change are fearful of it. They don't survive. Absolutely. And and with that being said, American Express, without giving away too much here, right? Like, what is it that they're uh, planning? And we, you know, companies like American Express are not planning for this quarter. They're planning for quarters ahead, if not years ahead. And what are some of the things that we're seeing that we want to make sure that merchants are doing in the future to continue to 
obviously be relevant as a, a merchant? Well, I mean, listen, I think there's a, a number of things. When I think of over the last couple of years of things that have really changed the payment space, it's really been the adoption of P2P payments and real-time payments, yes. right? And so um, merchants have to actually more fully embrace that the immediacy that comes with P2P payments, it spills over into how consumers want to pay for things. They want immediate payments. And so there's going to be more real-time payments. Um, I think of uh, buy now, pay later, right? Which was a thing really big 20, 19 and 20 then became a not thing during yeah. COVID, and, but it's still a thing, right? Still a thing, yeah. You gotta embrace that there are some consumers that wanna pay over time. Yes. And, and so do you partner with somebody who allows you that feature functionality? If you're an acquirer, do you help um, merchants get that functionality? If you're a card issuer like we are, do you create your own version of that? So it's just really about understanding what's new and then figuring out how it needs to be adapted uh, for your business model. Um, I think AI is, is it, you know, we're kind of like in the early stages are, yeah. of AI. Um, I'm certainly not the AI expert <laughs> at American Express, but what I can say is the companies that will win long-term um, are gonna test and learn. They're gonna pilot things. They're gonna take advantage of this, you know, amazing processing capacity to make for better consumer experiences, better merchant experiences, better shopping experiences. And so again, we, we won't be able to figure that out unless we try a few things, pilot a few things, see how it works out. And then if it works, make it generally available and, and embrace it very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And, and sometimes like a lot of things are these buzzwords, right? You mentioned buy now, pay later. Now this was one embedded. <laughs> Yeah, and that finance was like it's everywhere. It's right? everywhere, right? So like that perspective of embedding and being, you know, the internet of things has become a real thing. And we're even seeing how American Express is leveraging that for making things available for their merchants uh, across the U.S. And then, you know, global presence also makes a big difference that we're seeing as well. How important do you think it is for a merchant um, to have Canadian presence, global presence, like how, like, you know, some people are like, look, it's hard enough to, for me to conquer my small town, let alone Canada. What is your perspective so, on global? I mean, listen, I think it just, it's really gonna depend on your your company, what, yeah. you're, what you're doing. Um, there's a vast opportunity for those companies that can take advantage of um, selling abroad. Um, and there are platforms out there that allow you to easily sell in the U.S. Uh, and in Canada, um, that didn't exist ten years ago, yeah. right? I think of a company and a great partner like Shopify that allows a small business to kind of sell in, in multiple regions without the expense of um, having to put lots of infrastructure. So I think I think it's just really going to depend on do you think you can manage the demand? Can you create the demand for your product? Can you then manage that demand? Can you take advantage of, of the innovation and platforms that are out there? And if so, and you think it's gonna drive revenue, take advantage. If you think you can make the right money and the right uh, business model work, and it's just in your small town, do that. Absolutely, yeah. Especially if omni-channel is a big part, like you said, you still gotta have the click, yes. and you still gotta have them order. Right. You still gotta operate in that way in the future. No, no, That's awesome. That is to say, I will, I will probably say, add to that, though. Sure. There are tons of companies, tons of small businesses and merchants that are only gonna be the click part, right? Sure, um, They're fully only online. gonna be fully online um, and, and, and be super successful mm -hmm. at it. I do think that there's room to play if you're click and order or if you're just click. Well, let me ask you this then. In the reverse order, if you're just brick, do you still survive the same way with the types of consumers that we have so today? It's, again, I think it's going to really depend yeah. on what type of merchant you are. Like, um, I think of even like the local uh, restaurant that is just like a local phenomenon in that town. They're even having to do click because yeah. they need they needed through COVID to do curbside delivery. And then, oh, sure. by the way, people got used to it and they just want to order and pick yeah, up. Absolutely. So click um, at mortar means something different 
because of what we just went through with COVID and the fact that you know consumers really want this ease and they want things brought to them, which means sort of like this online slash mortar experience. Yeah. I want that great Italian food, yeah. but I just want to order it and have it delivered or picked up. We have to meet our customer where they are, That's essentially. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Knowing them, AI will help with that as well, which right. is really great. Right. Right. Um, we were talking a little bit about statistics as well. Small businesses, American Express, and how much of the American Express merchant base are small businesses today? So I would just say the overwhelming number of merchants are small businesses. That is awesome. And we're, we're close to 15 million uh, merchants in the U.S. except for the American Express card. The overwhelming majority. That is amazing. Are those small businesses that we actually access through our Op Blue partners. Um, so it's been a real success for us to be able to reach every corner of the United States through these partnerships. Yeah. Um, and have um, those smaller merchants benefit from, again, an American Express shopper that comes in, shops more frequently, buys bigger bas baskets. That is awesome. Awesome. So a little bit about you. What do you love to do? Okay. So I love movies. <laughs> okay. That's all. Love, love, at, a movie, at a movie theater or just at home? Like what is at, your... Anywhere. Like, really? Love okay. Movies, so I stream a bunch. I go to movies. I grew up with a big family. And the real treat for our family was... Um, my mom and dad would take us all to the movies. This is back in the day, by the way, I'm dating myself, where you could go to the drive-in movie for $3 for the car, right? Yes. So we got to go to the movies every week, uh, at least during the- Food hanging out of the yeah, window? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I got the you. the neighbor kids were in the station wagon. So I've loved movies, That's I awesome. still love them. I love to travel. Yes. Um, I'm one of those folks that I hope one day to make it to every country. I'm at 60 plus right now. Favorite? Uh, favorite country. I mean, it's hard not to love the United States of America. So let of me course. just put yeah, that out yeah, there. Yeah. But you know, like favorite places is just going to really depend. I just got back from uh, a holiday in Ecuador and that was amazing. Nice. And I was awesome. in Seychelles last year and that was amazing. So I just love seeing new places, yes. meeting new pe uh, people, eating different foods and understanding history. So um, travel just like makes me smile. I'm yeah, giving it awesome. away. Well, I, you know, normally people don't put Detroit at the top of their list. But I've been. You have. OK, well, when you Many are times. there again, I would love to have you try our cuisine. I think you would enjoy it. There. I actually, uh, a quick story between yeah. gigs. I de definitely had the downtime in my career it, where I started a company and it was in Southfield, Michigan. Really? That's uh, like literally 10 minutes from I our office. I know exactly where it is. Come and, on. Um, OK. We, no it was way. a real estate investment trust and I have partnered nice. with some folks that were Detroit based and it was really about you know, trying to do net uh, net leases and stuff. So no like just kidding. a completely random fact, but I've said plenty of time. And that's why I'm, I just, I'm <laughs> felt like we're family, right? When I, I, right I when I met you. Banking. Yeah. Well, I love this payment. <laughs> there you thing. go. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate the time and good luck here at the ETA. Well, listen to me. We appreciate what you, uh, the, the place and space that you play in thank payments. You. And thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Alrighty. Thanks, Ali. If you want to learn about all things ETA and all of the interviews that we have hosted, please watch the podcast Embedded on Spotify, Apple. You can also find us on YouTube and all the social channels.